Welcome to a Craft and Desert Diva's new release highlight featuring the Scene Builders die set. When you receive your die set, it will be all connected with little metal tabs in between each one of the dies. You're going to want to break these apart so you can use each die individually. You can do this one of two ways. You can bend the dies back and forth until they come apart on their own or you can use wire snips. Here you can see I will just continue to bend these dies back and forth until they come apart by themselves. This does take a little bit of time to do this. However, if you don't have the die snips, it is possible to get these apart. You can see here though, with my wire cutters, all I need to do is simply snip apart the wire tabs. If you feel any resistance in your snips, move them out away from the die just a bit and then go ahead and try again. You don't want to cut into the metal cutting portion of your die. Once you have all of your dies separated from each other, you should be left with 23 individual dies. Now these dies can be combined to create some really great elements to build up a scene. You can see here as I'm pointing to each one, you have a road, a slider die, a mountain with snow caps, a tree stump with leaves, you have a tree, or you can use it as simply a bush, a mushroom, a sun, a cloud, and a bird. These are wafer thin dies, so they can be used with any die cutting machine. I'm going to be showing how I do it with my Sizzix Big Kick. It's the same thing as a Big Shot. Just make sure you use the right combination for your die cutting machine. So I have both tabs down with my multi-purpose cutting platform. I've put down one cutting plate, my paper, a die cutting side facing down towards the paper, and another cutting plate on top. I'll go ahead and run this through my machine and when it comes out, I will have a beautifully die cut road. Each one of the dies in this set has exactly the same sandwich on the big kick. Here is a look at all of the die cuts cut from cardstock. Now I'm going to start putting some of these together, but I did want to show you each one of the individual elements that you can get with these die cuts. So let's go ahead and start off with the mushroom. Now this mushroom is one and one eighth inch tall by one and a half inches wide. Now the first thing I did was I cut the base of this mushroom from some darker tan cardstock. I also cut the top of the mushroom from cream and then this has six little dots that go on the top of the mushroom. Now three of these dots are kind of half circles so they go along the outer edge of the mushroom and then three are full circles. The base of the mushroom, the top of the mushroom, and each one of the dots have stitching along the edges. So all of these little die cuts go together with any other Craft and Desert Diva dies that also have stitching on them. And that makes for really easy scene building. Now I'm using glossy accents to put down each one of these little dots onto the mushroom. However, you can use any type of liquid adhesive or even very tiny paper adhesive too if you wanted to. I'm also using a quick sticks tool to help me put these down. You don't need this. You can just use your fingers to put these in place. But since I have this tool and it makes it a little bit easier on me, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Please note also, I'm using the colors that I wanted to when cutting these out. You can use any color cardstock, whatever your imagination leads you to, you can use for these die cuts. So I put on that last little dot there on the top of the mushroom and there you can see I have a wonderfully cute almost storybook mushroom ready to go on a card. Now on this mushroom, not only do you have stitching on the actual mushroom, but you can see on the negative space as well, it does stitching along that too, which makes for some very, very cute die cut inlay. Moving on to the tree. The base of the tree is one and a half inches tall by one and one eighth inch wide. The leaves of the tree are one and a half inches tall and wide as well. Now you can use these together or you can use them separately and just use that little leaf area as a bush. The base of the tree can also be glued in front of the leaves or can be glued behind the leaves as well for a different look. I'm using glossy accents to secure that base onto the leaves and I'm just going to place that right in front so you get a nice view of not only the leaves but also the base of the tree. Now like I said before, you can use this as the tree as you see here or you can just use the green section and use it as a bush. 
Here you can see also you have stitching not only on the die cut itself, but on the outer edge of the die cut too. So again, very cute die cut inlay techniques you can do with this. There's a closer look at all the stitching on those. And again, that stitching matches all the other stitching on Craft and Desert Diva's dies. Now for the mountains, I went ahead and cut the base of the mountains from gray cardstock, and you could leave that as is, or there are also three little snow caps that you can cut from white cardstock and put those on top of the little mountains, and they fit perfectly, and also the stitching fits perfectly, which you'll see in the uh, close up here. The mountains themselves are three and one eighth inch wide by one and one sixteenth inch tall. And also the negative die cut also has some stitching along the top. So again, great die cut inlay techniques. There's a close up of that mountain all put together. And there you get a nice close up of the stitching as well and how beautifully it moves from the snow caps to the mountains. Next is this cute little stump. Now this measures one and three quarter inches wide by one and one eighth inch tall. The little leaves measure three eighth inches tall by a quarter inch wide. Now to put this together, it's very simple. You could leave it as is, or there's the top of this little stump that you can cut and glue on. I did it the same color cardstock. However, you could do darker or lighter, whichever you prefer. And then I just attached the two little leaves onto that little branch sticking out from the stump as well. And you could use those leaves on their own or you could leave them off of the stump if you wanted to as well. You could also scatter a few along the base of the stump which would be a really cute effect as well. There's a close up of that stitching on the stump and what great detail it gives to it. Now moving on to the road. This road measures three inches wide by three and one sixteenth inch tall. This also has stitching along the negative space as well as your die cut. Now also included in this set is a slider die that fits perfectly with the road. There's a close up of that road. You can see it has stitching on the road itself and on the space that it cuts out. There's a closer look at the slider die. Now the slider die has a track of a quarter inch wide and this is three eighths inch in length. Now this slider die fits perfectly with the road as you've seen in that photo, or you can use it on its own. Now you can rotate this whichever way you might want it to go. So you could use it as a fish jumping over water, a bird flying through the sky. Your imagination is really the limit. And also you can make this as long or short as you want by simply doing a little bit of selective die cutting. Here you can see it fits perfectly, so all you need to do is extend that track out and you've got some great length there. There's a close up of that slider die cut into that road as well, so you can see it fits perfectly. Now for the sun die cut, it is three quarter inches by three quarter inches and this die cut only has stitching on the outside of it. There you can see a close up of that little sun there and I am sure there are a thousand ideas out there for this little die too. The bird is another one that has stitching only on the negative space die cut and it measures 3 8 inch tall by 1 and a quarter inch wide so it's a really good sized bird. There's a close up of that die cut and also the stitching around the die cut that you get. Now the cloud has stitching on the inside and outside of the die cut. It is 5 8 inch tall by 1 and 1 8 inch wide and there's a nice close up of it as well. Now I'm going to show you all of these die cuts up against an A2 sized card base. Sometimes measurements don't help me quite that much so I thought I would show you guys compared to an A2 sized card which is what a lot of card makers make. Now I'm going to layer these all up on this card base, however you can use as many or as little die cuts from this die set as you want to. Now you can see that road is quite large, it goes up almost three quarters of the way of the card base. The mountains fit very snugly up against the road and the sun doesn't overtake too much of the sky so you have plenty of room for the bird and also the cloud up there if you wanted to do all three of them. The little tree could be used in the background in the distance and you could also use the bush in front. I also placed the little mushroom in front of the bush to give you a better idea of the size of all of these compared to each other. And also there's that little tree stump over on the left hand side as well. 
Here's a nice close up of all of them together on a white A2 sized card base. And here's a look at a few maps that the designer of these dies, Mindy Beverly, has put together. These show you a few more options and ideas and how well these scene builders dies work with other Craft and Desert Divas die sets. The design team has created some beautiful projects using these dies. Here are a few photos to help get you inspired. dies are available at craftanddesertdivas.com. That link will be in the description box below. Thanks for watching!